Welcome to my Texas workshop. I'm Randy Lammers. I'm Aaron Keevan. This is Worth Knowing. What do you do when you need a permanent assembly, but you can only work from one side? Blind rivets are a good solution, and that's what we're gonna talk about today, Aaron, is rivets. Yep, yeah, exactly. So we've got a lot of different types of rivets out there. Mm -hmm. um, one I can think of is solid rivets. Oh yeah. And that takes actually working from both sides of a, of a workpiece. You yep. can't just do one side. Old technology's been out there for a long, long time. time. Also, we call it an old bucking rivet. Yeah, yeah, been hot out. riveting is another term we've seen yep. used before. Been so. out there for a long time. Long time. We also have semi-tubular rivets, mm -hmm. where again, you're working from both sides of the assembly in order to compress the rivet. Those are not what we're gonna talk about. What we're talking about today are blind rivets, where you work from only one side, and you have a mandrel in the rivet, Aaron, mm -hmm. that gives you a secondary upset on the back side. Now, right. I wanna clarify, we wanna give you the basics today. There are a variety of different types of blind rivets. There are blind rivets that are soft set rivets. There are blind rivets that are, are structural rivets. We have some of these laid out here today. Yep. We're gonna give you the basics so you have a basic understanding and then you can learn about the other types of rivets for other applications uh, later on. So let's start with an understanding of what basic blind rivets are. Yeah, so you, you mentioned this already. Mm -hmm. We're working from one side of a workpiece. We're not having to worry about working from two sides that we'd see in, say, solid riveting. Correct. So you're taking your rivet Mm -hmm. placing it directly into a hole, right? and a special tool is used to pull that mandrel back mm -hmm. and engage that upset. You said the upset word there. The Not upset. like we're upset at something, <laughs> but we're upsetting the backside of that fastener exactly. to clamp to the material. Right, Could that, again, gives you a secondary hit. That's right. So where are these used? We see them in, mm -hmm. uh, the first thing that comes to my mind is uh, certainly on our house and on this shop, uh, we have blind rivets uh, in the gutter system. Yeah. So that, that yep. thin gauge aluminum, yep. pop those blind rivets in. So really it's anywhere that you're putting light gauge metal together. Uh, again, you want a permanent solution. Also soft materials, they're doing a lot of plastics today. This is where you get into the soft mm -hmm. set uh, blind rivets. So we see blind rivets around everywhere and they're very, very popular and they're very economical to put in as well. They're very, they're very fast. There's automated systems to put blind rivets in with. Yeah. Let's start with the basics of a blind rivet. Okay. What I like to start with is always materials and finishes. So when we start talking about rivets, you typically see them in steel. Yes. Okay, and Frequently. with finishes on steel, really there's only one option, which is zinc plating. And the reason for that is your finish on your steel has to be ductile mm -hmm. because you're going to upset this rivet and the finish has to be able to give with that. So not every finish will work on a blind rivet. So zinc is primarily the one that you yeah. use. Yeah, we're not gonna see zinc flake on there because obviously it becomes brittle, right? Those are things that we can't do. And you're not gonna hot dip galvanize <laughs> them either. You're not gonna hot dip galvanize. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, probably okay. destroy the rivet at yeah, that point. Yeah, exactly. So, um, aluminum is another one we see a lot of. Um, very popular. Very popular, stainless. Mm -hmm. Um, and even uh, copper. So then when we get more into the actual anatomy of the rivet, sure. in terms of then what we have here is the rivet itself, which is also some people call it the body of the rivet or we refer to it as an eyelet. It has a head. Now the head shapes are primarily, you have a domed head, sure. which is your kind of the basics. Mm -hmm. There is then a large flange, which is just a little bit larger domed head and then there is a countersunk yeah. head for going into for flat surfaces. Yeah, it's almost like a flathead screw in that, the way it looks at that, least. So That's yeah. correct. Then you have the mandrel. Now I will see some people or hear some people refer to this as the nail uh, or the brake stem is another good term for it. But the mandrel goes all the way through the body of the rivet and then it itself has a head on the back side. So the one I'm pointing to, by the way, it's really kind of hard to see that head on the back side. This is a multi-grip that I'm pointing to right here. 
Uh, it does multiple grips of material, mm -hmm. but it has a hit on the back side, and that's what causes the upset. So you have the body or the rivet itself, which is also known as an eyelet. Mm -hmm. You have the mandrel that goes all the way through. That's what you're pulling, and that has the head on the back side of it that causes the upset, and then you have the head itself. Exactly. No, and no. these are covered in IFI 114, at least for the inch series type. That is correct. And then if we're talking about ISO, there is a ton of standards on rivets. So you and I looked at this. Because there's different types there's of rivets. There's different types of rivets. So there are ISO standards on this also, but um, what we're specifically talking about today is uh, in the IFI. Yep, let's stay with that. Now, dimensions. Let's talk about dimensions, because that's a whole other issue when it comes to blind rivets. When you look into the IFI 114 specification, you're going to notice that a lot of those uh, dimensions are reference dimensions. REF is what it says in that book. Those are reference mm -hmm. dimensions. So those are just basics. The manufacturer will actually make the exact right dimension to perform as that rivet needs to perform. Now there is a way though that we do call out the dimensions of a blind rivet. It starts with the diameter which is a 130 seconds. So it's called out in 130 seconds. So a number three would be 330 seconds. A number four would be 430 seconds, which happens to equate to 1 8th. And then five, 530 seconds, uh, six, 630 seconds, which is 3 16th. So you can kind of see what I'm saying. That's the diameter of the rivet itself. Mm -hmm. So there's a number system there. Then the length of the rivet, which is the length of the rivet is, is called out in sixteenths. That's right. So that's the maximum material grip. So it's the maximum thickness of the material that that rivet will grip together. So that is called out in sixteenths. So for an example, a number 42 rivet would be a four, which is four thirty seconds, which is one eighth, mm -hmm. two, which is two sixteenths, which is also be one eighth or point one two five. That rivet would be a one eighth rivet that would grip together a maximum of one eighth thickness of material of forty two. That's the number system. So we have a gauge here. So yeah. pick up a blind rivet, an open okay. blind rivet, and show them Grab what we're my talking gauge. about. This is the proper way. Don't get your calipers out. Take your plate like uh, Aaron has right here, mm -hmm. and measure the blind rivet. Show right. them how to measure that so one. So we're, we're going to measure the diameter first, which is at the end. I'm holding holding it by the mandrel. Um, I believe this looks to be a 532nd, so I'll just insert here, clearance. And then if I'm measuring the grip range, there it is. And it's measured to, not to the upset part of the, man, uh, the blind rivet, it's measured to the actual tubular part. So Correct. it's 52. That's a 52. Mm -hmm. So that is a 5 30 seconds diameter rivet gripped together, 1 8 thickness of material mm -hmm. maximum. So that's how you measure a blind rivet. That's critical to understand so we get that right. Okay, now we have to talk about the mechanical properties of rivets. Right, the mechanical strengths involved with this. Mm -hmm. And typically, we're worried about shear. Correct. And not tinsel. Correct. Yeah, unlike a lot of the fasteners we've been talking to you about, Rivets are primarily in lighter applications where shear is your primary uh, concern. You're just tacking two light gauge metal uh, metals together or small uh, plastic pieces together. Shear is primarily. Now, if you do get into more clamp load requirement, uh, tinsel requirement, then you want to go into other types of rivets where we get into structural type of rivets, and they are in existence also. That's just not what we're uh, focusing on today. We're focusing on a basic blind rivet. So okay. shear strength. Now, also, so pick the shear strength you need in your assembly and then pick the material that will give you the shear strength. If you can imagine, uh, steel is going to be a little stronger than aluminum. Exactly. The stainless steel rivet's good up there in, in shear strength as well. They so, can, depending on the type of stainless that you use. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So make sure that you first start with your, your shear requirements and then pick the diameter and pick the material that meet your shear requirements. So, you wanna pull some rivets? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Okay, let's pull right. some rivets. Let me get the tool out. All right, cool. First of all, I wanna give a special shout out and a thank you to Industrial Rivet, also known as the Rivet King brand, for furnishing our tools and our rivets today to allow us to do this show. So yeah, thank exactly. you, thank you guys for, for that assistance. Yes, thank you. Now, with that, this is just your basic open end rivet. 
Now, th this mandrel will pull, pull into the rivet and you'll kind of see a little hole through there, but the mandrel stuck in, is inside what's after it breaks off. There is what's called a closed in rivet that's also yep. very, very popular where that's closed in. So if you don't want that hole there, it is closed right. in. It makes it look a little flush. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. All right, so let's do that and let me show you just how simple it is. I love this tool. It's a very nice battery operated tool that's on the market today. So you, all you do is you have different size nose piece for different size uh, rivets. You put the mandrel of the rivet into the nose piece. And then we have our demo plate that's already has the right size holes for us. You can see we've already pulled some rivets. And let's just pull one for you real quick. So I insert the rivet itself into the hole and simply just pull the rivet. That's cool, quick. So it's very quick, it's very, very quick. simple. Uh, the head of the mandrel upsets the back side of the rivet, so that bulges out. Now the other thing that takes place is that this rivet expands within the hole. Yeah. So that's important to understand. Yeah, you wouldn't think that's happening inside, but it is. Right. So. And so you have a bulged out or an upset backside. You have the head of the rivet on this side. Exactly. Works very nicely. Yep. And we see some different type of tooling sometimes too. Um, mm -hmm. Hydraulic. See that a lot in the industry. So yep, pneumatic a, hydraulic tools. Pneumatic and hydraulic tools. So that's another way those are applied. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Now, there's another thing that you can do. You you have a washer there, yeah. which is what we call a backup washer. So right, Aaron, exactly. you want to do that? Yeah, I'll take uh, there you go. Take control here. So you can use a backup washer, and we're probably pretty close here, but I think uh, this will set correctly. So again, we're gonna place the mandrel inside of the tool, and be careful here, just to ensure that I've got that mounted correctly. Pick up my tool here. I always face this up, typically. Yeah, the mandrel falls back in. You can kind of hear keeper. it fall back in the keeper, which is nice. And there it is, pulled right through. Simple, isn't it? So so simple, so quick. And so that by using a backup washer, if you have soft materials, that helps with your pull through. Mm -hmm. So if, if you're into that soft materials and you have a little bit of tinsel on that, go ahead and just use a backup washer. Yeah. Real, real simple, real, real simple to do. Well. Now that you brought that up, pull okay. through. Now we know that some, you know, sometimes rivets will, could have issues, but okay. well, let's uh, let's troubleshoot this a little bit. So right. let's talk about pull through issues. When, what happens there? Okay, so we we see this sometimes if your hole is too large mm -hmm. or your hole is oblong. Remember what I said: the rivet expands within that hole. So if, you're, if your hole's a, bit, a little bit too long, that mandrel will just pull all the way through. As that rivet's trying to expand out and your hole's large, it'll pull all the way through. Sometimes you'll get a partial pull through as well. It'll pull part of the way through and then break off and you get a little bit of the mandrel sticking up. Again, exactly. that's usually your hole is a little bit too large. Too large, right? or head popping or head popper, sometimes the, referred to as. Okay, and what that's <laughs> referred to is the head of the mandrel, that little round head on the end of the mandrel, that's the upset, uh, that upsets the rivet. Yep. That pops out. That's usually your material is too thick for the maximum thickness of the rivet or your hole is too small. So that will cause that to pop out on the back side, but usually it's your material is too thick for that rivet. Make sure you choose the right size for thickness of material. Exactly right. And uh, another common one I've seen is a loose set. Okay. Loose set is, that typically tells us that again, could be your hole is too large. That can cause certainly a loose set. It's got to expand out. Uh, again, think of oblong hole, holes too. The other thing that you have to also realize then is your thickness of material. So yep. if your material is too thin for the size rivet you chose, sometimes you can get a loose set uh, for that reason because it doesn't pull up right. Right, and maybe a solution there is to go down in the size there on the grip range. Right. Yeah. Also, when you're looking at these things, pay attention to burrs around the hole mm -hmm. because they can make changes in your grip range. Also look at spaces between materials. That makes changes in your grip range. All of these factors come into play to pick the right rivet for your application. In conclusion, blind rivets come in a variety of types. But they have three basic head styles. That is the domed head, mm -hmm. the large flan, which is a larger domed head, and the countersunk head. Countersunk. 
materials, we see steel, aluminum, stainless steel, and copper. And your strength comes from what material you choose. We're usually talking about sheer strength, choose the right material for the strength you need. Exactly right. And then as far as if we're getting into higher tensile applications, we might look at some of those structural type of rivets. That is correct. Yep. And dimensions. Mm -hmm. So guys, let's use those rivet gauges. That's really important in this. You know, the IFI, it shows us reference dimensions right. primarily. And the way we measure is the diameter mm -hmm. is by a 32nd, and then the grip lengths are gonna be by a 16th. Correct, use the number system. Exactly. So assembly is easy and can also be automated anywhere from single use to thousands of pieces in an automated line. Blind rivets are hopefully a good choice for your assembly. Fast, permanent, and one-side assembly with blind rivets. That's worth knowing. Like that riveting content? Subscribe. We'll see y'all next time.